Good evening, India. My name is Dhruv Bindra and I'm 15 years old. Today is World Children's Day and we are so excited to be here. Good evening, everybody. My name is Parithi Puri and I'm a 17-year-old student from Alcon International School, Delhi. Today, both me and Dhruv feel so excited to be in the company of such amazing torchbearers and changemakers. We would like to express our gratitude to UNICEF and Doordarshan for making this happen. So in today's program, designed by children for children, we are going to talk about something that is close to all of our hearts, child rights. So let's begin. We are going to talk about this wonderful agreement called the Convention for the Rights of Child. The Convention on the Rights of the Child is an agreement between all the governments in the world to protect the rights of all children everywhere. It is essential for us to know about the things and rights that protect us in growing up in good health. Through this, any individual below the age of 18 is empowered with numerous opportunities to learn and to express themselves through platforms like this. I would advise adults and children alike to give this a quick read because it talks about some really fundamental things. For instance, Article 24 says that all children are entitled to a good quality healthcare, to nutritious food and a clean environment so that we all stay healthy. Also, Article 28 states our right to education. Primary education should be affordable to every child everywhere in this country. Furthermore, what is even more important is the quality of education. Are our schools safe spaces for us? Are students really enjoying what they learn? These are the questions we need to ask today. As you can see, it would be an informative read. Now, moving on to the segment that both of us are perhaps most excited about. A panel discussion relating to this year's theme of World Children's Day. Schools as the foundation for a safe and supportive environment for children. But before that, here's a quick video. बस्तों में ढेर सारी शरारतें और बालों में कंगी के चुभन लिए नन्ही मुट्ठियों से आंख मलते घर से निकलना माँ की डांटों से बचते बचाते सोनू की साइकिल से रेस लगाते गिरते संभलते संभल के अकड़ते स्कूल पहुंचने और फिर अफरा तफरी की सुबहों से बेफिक्र दोपहरों तक का वो सफर बड़ी ठाट से काटा जाता था नोटबुक के पन्नों में मौज भरी फूकों का ईंधन देकर हवाई फौजें तैयार कर लेना बस्तों में मुंह देकर अचार और पराठों की खुशबू से नियतें भर लेना वो टीचर भले से जिनकी सरपरस्ती में हमें पढ़ने का ढंग आया जब उनकी नजर से देखा समझ हर एक रंग आया मगर बिन्नी की चुटिया की गाठें जब टीचर की डांटों की शकल लेती तो हम रो ही देते थे वहीं यारों की आंखों में नटखट सी हमदर्दी देख हंस भी लेते थे उन ऊंची दीवारों से टकराती गूंजती घंटियों और चहचहाती आवाजों के बीच हमारी हर जरूरत का बिन कहे पूरा हो जाना हर फिक्र का छूमंतर होना एक जादू सा मालूम होता था तशरीफ अक्सर कुर्सी पे और सोच आसमान में कलाबाजियां खाया करती थी सौर मंडल में दंगल मचना हड़प्पा के नगरों में मेलों का सजना आसमानी गुब्बारों में समंदरों पानी भरना सूरज की गर्मी से पिघल के बरसना किताबों के ये सारे पन्ने घिस दिए जाते थे जब इम्तहानों के मौसम आते थे तफरी के घंटे में नाश्तेदानों की अजब नुमाइश लगती थी इधर आसिफ के घर की खीर के चर्चे बड़े हैं तो उधर सतनाम के छोलों की शान में पर्चे बटे हैं 
टब्बों की दुकानें सिमटी और कबड्डी के पाले बनाए जाते चुप्पी बैठी है इधर सांस टूटी उधर टांग छुटी चौकड़ी पैरों में धम 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 कभी डोले कभी मन भरे जैसा नाचे आपस की रंजिशें टीमों में जुड़ते तो भूल जाते थे गोल करके यारों के कंधों पे झूल जाते थे जैसा नाचे बचपन की गलियों में मन भरे जैसा नाचे बचपन हमने सीख सीख के थोड़े ही जिया है बल्कि खेल खेल के सीखा है सो विदाउट मच फर्दर अडू आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस आर पैनलिस्ट फॉर टूडे Ms Yasmin Ali Haq is a UNICEF representative of India. She has extensively worked for child rights in our country. Uh, Dr Jitendra Nagpal is the founder director of uh, Expressions India. He is also a very renowned psychiatrist in our country. Uh, Sundarya Pradhan is a computer science engineering student who has won various uh, medals in chess championships across the world in the blank category. So welcome to all of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And Thank you very, very happy World Children's Day. Yeah, so too, also. <laughs> now, Yasmin, we would like to start with you. Now, you are leading UNICEF, the most credible and trusted organization for children in the country, and honestly, it's fantastic having you here. Uh, could you please tell me about what you think of schools as a supportive environment for children? What really are the different elements that make schools such a safe space? First of all, thank you so much for you know really working with us on this and. Um, if i look back into my own life it you know there is that firm belief based on my own experience then of course i'm working for an organization unicef who is a global advocate and champion really for school for children being in a learning environment yeah. whether they're in their uh, normal habitat or whether they're fleeing from violence or conflict or whether they've just been struck by some form of disaster it's so important for children to have a consistent and a place where normalcy happens and what's normalcy for most children it's going to school yeah. but if we hear from children themselves uh children are telling us that for them the most pressing issue for them is quality of education for them to be in an environment where they can learn uh they can be themselves where there's no fear and where there's no stress for them and in that it's it's really important that we listen to children um for them having uh, teachers who care for them teachers who interact with them very important um having parents who understand them uh who help them in their journey and also to have the belief of both the teachers and the parents if teachers and parents don't uh believe in a child it's very difficult for them to really realize their their full potential and then also it's an important violence uh is an issue that happens in many schools in many situations whether it's school or home or in the street but when it happens in school it really keeps children away from education mm-hmm. violence is you know an adult might be violent towards children but also sadly we have situations where bullying is an issue uh where harassment by the seniors is an issue where girls feel harassed by by boys even if they're at the same age or vice versa so it's really important that we listen to children and also learn from them the solutions that are available thank you so much ma'am so my next question is to dr nakpal so as we all know here that uh, expressions india is one of the well recognized and awarded programs by the governmental organizations in the country it strives to empower the co scholastic elements that promote child welfare and inclusive spaces in indian schools yep. so as the leader of this movement of change in adolescent education what has been your most rewarding experience thank you parithi and dhruv i think it's been a wonderful moment to be with you all over here well i take the clue from what yasmin ma'am has just been mentioning india can boast about uh, 
the fact that we are nearly 2 million schools in the country by the way mm. and that's one of the largest number and more than more than some of the children across the countries in the world now if you have 2 million schools in the country and uh, some of them can boast of the children who are you know undergoing the all round development we are not going to schooling in india now just for academic achievements you just mentioned in your introduction also and uh, when we look at the physical the psychological the social evolution of a young mind what is the whole purpose of then completing the schooling years not getting the school certificate getting into the iits and the big institutions in the country well that's a career part i think what's important as part of the uncrc and what the unicef uh, preamble stands for is the happy child is the child who's contented has a fulfilling experience during the founding years of life isn't it and we are looking at a foundation in the founding years then i think it is imperative that what we are discussing today is most relevant for india hmm. we are a nation where the young people are in the mood of being aware like you are responsible and then completely empowered for their own lives and when the young minds of a country get empowered to lead the nation as ma'am said we are not only leading the children of the country we are leading the parents we are leading the teachers and we are leading every leader of the country no doubt that a lot of data is coming up in our country and sometimes it is quite saddening and uh, you know dismal also you look at malnutrition you look at uh, mental health issues mm -hmm. we look at uh, say suicides we look at violence and aggression drug abuse we look at child abuse you know the child protection policies are yet to be implemented in the right direction in the school system keeping this as an example keeping this as a plethora of all the uh, mission that can be carried out for the 2 million schools in the country i think the task is huge for the entire century the 21st century so the schools are indeed the founding years and the foundations for a healthy happy and a harmonious childhood so my experience is that we are in the right direction we are all together thanks to the audience the leaders the young leaders of our nation and their counselors and teachers who are actually helping each of us together to join hands in the big movement of the country yes sir thank you uh, sandarya thank you so much for joining us here today your life story is beyond inspiring um, now india today is still unfortunately a country that poses many hardships for individuals with different abilities have you ever faced discrimination or any other difficulty in school and if so how did you overcome it um first of all i would like to thank you all for having me here it's really wonderful and uh, namaste to all of you uh, and i would like to inform that uh, my brother also like me is 100% blind his name is prachurya kumar pradhan and um he is also an international chess player and asian para games silver medalist so at first we studied in a blind school uh in bhubneshwar till i was in class 5 and till my brother was in class 8 so it's like then my parents realized that no nothing much is going on fine because there we are learning how to wash our dishes our clothes and so on but when it comes to uh education when it comes to curriculum it's it's not really much because uh we are not competing with the mainstream we are competing with the people having similar challenges and then then we are just getting limited because like we we have an aim to go uh, above other students right and we we are not we 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 really kind of forget that we are a part of this world where there are people who can see and we have to compete with them and ultimately we have to live with them so my parents decided that we should study in mainstream schools they said that they cannot take this kind of risk um at that time there was already the law that um no one can be denied because of his disability or so on to any school so uh, and there was a very very nice uh, commissioner of mass education department in odisha so if we just wrote one email it would be enough but uh, we decided to take a different path what we did is that my my parents dropped me and my brother in a school 3 kilometers away in different village uh, my brother in a different school and my uh, myself in another school in the same village both were mainstreams and then after 2 years in class 10 my brother did very well he topped the entire block 
And then the same school which had rejected my brother invited me to study there. So that was quite an achievement. And as I went to the school, it was very friendly. Like, and, and you know, they invited us. Like the, the the teachers there revolted against the administration of the school. They decided. They, they said that the decision was actually wrong because, like, they ha they have already lost one one student, one potential student of that school, and they don't want to lose another. So they invited me, and. I went there and I got really good cooperation. As soon as I entered the school, the sighted friends, they, they were holding my hand and they were all ready to escort me. It, it was really a wonderful experience. So the same people can, you know, give a completely different kind of treatments. They, they can <coughs> either, uh, you know, they can treat you very badly, they can treat you very well. This is all up to the mindset of them. That's what I think. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, my next question is to Dr. Nagpal. Uh, sir, this question is really close to my heart and I want to ask you something related to the mental health issues faced by students in the schools of our country. Sir, unfortunately, this is a subject that uh, a lot of people are not aware about, especially at the school level. So, as someone who is a really renowned psychologist and who has worked with children in schools, what message would you like to give it to them? Well, I am so happy, Paridi, to hear this coming from you that you are, you are having this uh, issue close to your heart. And as an adolescent peer educator, what else can be a, you know, a skyline of hope okay. when a student herself is talking about the need for this. Again, I go back to the idea of uh, schooling in India and uh, take the clue from the fact that we are a large diverse nation and you cut across 100 kilometers in India, you will find the culture, the language and almost everything in terms of emotionality also changing, isn't it? So, when we come to understanding each other's emotion and the founding years are going through a great uh, challenging ecstatic revolution in India, cyber world, we belong to the world of IT right now. So, a lot of virtual communication is important for economical growth, it could be for overall growth of the nation also, but uh, there is something going wrong, something going wrong in terms of distancing human relationships, who else better than the adolescents can see this happening. Real time communication within the families is coming down, declining and sometimes even almost to the level of being destructive. The students in the school also need one, you know, a real time communication with the peer group, programs which are focused on the peer education as such, mm. to come closer in understanding each other's emotions also. The common statement a person like me working in the field of uh, psychology, psychiatry and mental health would come across, you know, in the helplines and the emails that nobody understands me, you know, a 13 year old yeah. or a 15 year old or an exam going, a board exam going student says, I wish my parents could understand me, they just let me be, let me be, I want to do the best what I can, mm -hmm. not live the dreams of other people, what they wished for me to be. And secondly, there are times when I go through those feelings of sadness, helplessness, hopelessness. I wish somebody could walk the talk with me. You know those moments where my friends are there, but sometimes my close family members, my counsellors, my teachers. So I think the mental health scenario is not just about mental health and mental problems. It is so much to do about the climate of happiness in a school and the climate of well-being and happiness in the family. Mm. So who else, where else in the world? We have a heritage of 5000 years, happiness was written in the scriptures of India. Where are those moments of happy families, happy schools? Are we running away from them because of the virtual media, the cyber world? I think what we need is to come closer, the family and the school partnership to understand the child, to understand the emotions of a adolescent, what you are going through. I am sure you would have gone through ups and downs, but here you are an adolescent leader who can now set an example for many people. One suggestion to the government of India and the UNICEF, I am so happy sitting next to ma'am. Uh, India has, as I mentioned, nearly 2 million schools, but we hardly have about 4,000 counsellors in schools. Yeah. So I think we have a ratio of about one counsellor with about 20,000 schools. In the US, you can't run a school without at least two or three counsellors in one school. We are a huge population. We need teachers training as counsellors, we need adolescent peer educators as counsellors, first aid counsellors, first aid mental health 
listeners, mm. somebody who can listen to my heartbeat, you know, my emotions. And similarly, the training for parents, helping the parents, my brother, sisters to be partners in my mental health. Yeah. So, we are facing depression, we are facing anxiety, stress related, exam related, career related. We are coming across a lot of drug abuse in India. Nicotine, alcohol is pass. We are talking about cannabis, we are talking about LSD. So, these are the areas for adolescents and then for smaller children, the younger, you know, the primary school going children. We have these children who are hyperactive, we have conduct problems, we have learning disabilities. We are a happy nation that we are able to recognize dyslexia, learning disabilities. We have counselors who are such well trained who can identify children who need additional help. But then lot of partnerships are required with the UN, with the government of India, with the schools and the child of course. Yeah. Thank you so much sir for such wonderful insights. Uh, Yasmin ma'am, I think we've all heard about the UNICEF hashtag Go Blue initiative. That's not just being implemented in all the states of India, but across the world. For me personally, it's heartwarming to see children taking over important roles and positions, influencers talking about World Children's Day, monuments going blue, and just seeing everyone in general coming out and giving their support to this great common cause. Oh, and additionally, off the top of my head, I would like to congratulate you regarding the appointment of Miss Hima Das as the Youth mm. Ambassador on the 14th of November. Yeah. That was really fantastic. Um, so my question after that long monologue <laughs> really is, how did UNICEF come up with such an interesting idea? And according to you, how is it really going to make an impact for the better? So, first of all, we are as excited as you are and, and truly it's such an honor and privilege to have Hima as an advocate for young people, as, as really an ambassador for, for the voice of young people. And it's really important because uh, World Children's Day is an event for children by children. And it, it's very, it has a very serious message every year. And this year, the serious message is to have schools as safe and Absolutely. protective environments for, for children. And here, it's so important that we have the children's participation. So again, having you two really running this program is so great for us. Um, and as I was mentioning earlier, when we, we listen to children, and for us, it's important that we get directly from children what their views are. And we did that this year through um, a U report, a poll that went out to children and we heard directly from them about the pressing issues I just talked about, but also about solutions. Mm. So the action that children are, are putting forward that given all the problems we've heard from Dr. Nagpal, from Sundaria, we heard, you know, the challenges he faced. Um, and the, some of the solutions that, that uh, you brought forward. So children have really uh, uh, highlighted a few areas. One is for them to be in a free and a, uh, or a fear-free environment. They suggest that we have child rights orientation and training in all schools yes. for, for the teachers, for the children, for the parents to understand the entitlements children have. We're not doing children a favor. It really is by ratifying the CRC. It means we are all the, the, uh, the duty bearers. The children are the rights holders and, and we as adults and stakeholders are duty bearers. It's also important that we have the communication um, uh, between parents and teachers. Uh, so that they together can be supporting the child because it's not either or if you're learning in school but when you go home you don't have the environment to continue or maybe corporal punishment isn't happening in school but it might be happening at home or vice versa it's really important that the whole environment for children is whether it's in the classroom home or playground is a conducive one um, Children put forward uh, sports opportunities as a really important way of them feeling uh, empowered in a way. For children, it's also important that they're not seen as silent recipients. You know, in the old days, we used to say a child is there to be seen and not to be heard. But very much now we're saying, and I'm sure doctor will, will strengthen that, that sure. We need to give children the space where they feel comfortable to voice their opinion, to voice any discrimination they're facing. Um, if, if as a child I am unable to go to a, or have a trusted uh, teacher or parent to whom I can uh, 
take back if I have been discriminated against or if I have faced sexual harassment, I need that space to be able to do it. So the trust building does not happen in one day, it does not happen by reading one book. It, it is a process and I think we all have a strong role to play and in UNICEF we are really proud to be associated with everyone in doing that. Thank you so much ma'am. So Sundarya, I met Sundarya last year at the World Children's Day celebration uh, 2017 and since then he has inspired me very much and Sundarya uh, unfortunately in our country a lot of children are not able to pursue their goals due to some societal pressures or challenges they face in their lives. So to everyone that is watching right now, uh, all the children who are struggling right now with their lives, what message would you like to give to them so that they continue to pursue their passions just like you did with so much enthusiasm? Mm, first of all, I'd like to tell the children that they're not alone. Yeah. Um, there are millions of children who are facing a problem quite similar to you, just you are not able, just you are not connected. And Chil uh, not only children dream, even adults dream and even their dreams get shattered. Yeah. But then the dream of a child I feel is much more important because I personally feel that children have much more potential and it is much more connected to their very existence. So yeah, the dream of a child is extremely important. But then what happens is as you pointed out. Uh, and everyone here has pointed out that uh, due to pressures, children are not able to achieve their goals. For this, they actually need, uh, kind of as Plato had said, uh, a nation needs divine madness to, to improve or something like that. So, it is like, I do not think that um, that much of madness is required, but at least some kind of very high level of dedication is required to whatever your dream is, so that no matter what kind of challenges you face, you can still overcome it. Actually, uh, when, when, when my brother was rejected in that school, then and uh, when he topped the school, uh, I mean when he topped the block, the same year, I also got selected to play world senior chess championship for the blind in Spain and that time, I, that time I was 13. So that was also kind of a, a reason why the school wanted me to study there. So who knows that if you, if, if you uh, work with complete determination, someday y you may do something like this or even much better and you can change the situation you are in. You can change the situation millions of children are facing like you. Like perhaps today I am talking here, many teachers will be watching who might be having the mindset that uh, it is difficult for disabled ch children to study uh, in mainstream schools, but maybe their mindset will change today. It is possible. So I feel that children should pursue their dreams as long as possible. If let us say it is a condition of extreme pressure and at some point you have to give up, then it is okay, you have to give up, then you have to give up. But at least you have learned how to deal with your life, how to deal with different struggles and now that you have learned to deal with it, mm -hmm. now whatever different struggle comes, you, you can still handle it mm -hmm. because you have got the experience. And maybe you can create history someday when one door closes another door opens but but then you have to keep walking forward as long as possible so i feel that one thing uh, and definitely those who are in extreme pressure uh, it's a worldwide issue that is why unicef is there mm -hmm. and you know we we hear you and i hope the situation will change of course it will uh, it will not happen in a day, not in a year. It is a very long term process as ma'am pointed out. So, I think that the children have to, you know, like as long as possible, keep pursuing their goals and uh, at least never procrastinate. Like I have, I have seen many people, many children that when they, they work very hard, 
and st still if they are in very high pressure and they somehow lose their interest and start playing video games and so on, they start wasting their time. So, I, I think children should not go into this direction. I feel that if you keep working in uh, uh, the direction of your goals, then if not this, then you will achieve something else for sure. Just like you know, uh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, for example, he wanted to be a pilot, but then he just uh, like I in the examination, he came ninth, where eight persons were selected, but he went on to become the president of the country. Thank you so much. That was Thank really you. beautiful. Yeah, honestly, and I completely agree with you. And I honestly feel very strongly about children who are unable to reap the benefits of all their hard work. So, ma'am, um, you know, I I always feel propelled to help other children around me. Um, my next question to you is, in general, how can students help their peers, whether it's about child rights, any uh, different abilities, or anything in general? You know, this is so important, and, and Sundaria gave us such an eloquent description of motivating each other and, and supporting uh, each other as peers. This is important in many ways because it, it has to provide a safe space. In a way, children with their peers do find a safe space, um, but it's important that we take that space responsibly. Um, just as there are child rights and adults have obligations, children also have responsibility. And I think having peer support groups are a great way of nurturing and, and supporting or, or really bringing into fruition that responsibility of children. So those who uh, are fortunate, those who have been able to overcome a challenge, uh, those who have found solutions, who look at options, I think it's about providing that to, to our, our peers. Uh, so I would say the work with peer networks is, yep. is crucial in this, in promoting a better understanding, in supporting children who are in difficult situations and to look, help them think through the options. Uh, when we have challenges, um, we also have solutions that are out there. The, it might be in the form of a very understanding teacher, or uh, uh, an understanding member of the school management committee. We also have 1098, which is at our disposal, right? That's one of the great things I, I discovered when I first came to India, that the child helpline is there yeah. uh, for us to, uh, to tap into. And um, if, li uh, like you said, um, you, you feel that uh, you're, you are passing on the privilege you have uh, faced, to other children by uh, working in peer networks, that's really important yes. that, that we, we really take that forward and I'm sure when we take that forward, uh, children learning from children is extremely strong and, and that's a very safe space. Yeah. Thank you so much ma'am. Yes, it's really important and we have so many peer educators here trained by Nakpal sir. So it's really important. Um, Yasmin ma'am, uh, the last question of the day to you. Uh, Ma'am, UNICEF as an organization, it does so much life-changing and incredible work as today is a testimony to. And, but uh, I want to ask you, how does an agency like UNICEF, which is spread over 190 countries all over the world, working for children, gets its support, especially in terms of resources? And how can we as individuals and institutions help you all further to do such impressionable work? And, and uh, you're right, it's such a privilege yes. for us who, who work in UNICEF. It's, it's a privilege to be able to do the work we do, uh, to be able to travel the countries, to learn about so many different cultures, to meet so many amazing uh, people uh, around the world. Uh, and we wouldn't be able to do it without the support of our, our donors. Mm -hmm. Um, UNICEF is a voluntary funded organization, so we get funding from governments, uh, from donors uh, who are corporate sector or private sector, um, but also from individuals. You know, it's from Mrs. Patel or, or Mr. Smith that we get funding that comes into UNICEF. And for that, why, why would they put money into UNICEF? Because for us, we 
constantly try to strive for excellence, for producing results for children, for working with all stakeholders, where it's government, civil society, professional associations, children themselves, media organizations, Doordarshan, everyone has a stake in making the world a better place for children. And we have to work with everyone. So our credibility is extremely important in this. And part of our credibility comes from who we bring to the table, how we place the issues, how we keep the focus on children. Um, I was at an event uh, two days ago where children said, please, we're not the future. We're here today. Focus on us today. The future might be too late for us. And that's so true that unless we're working with children today, the human capital of the country uh, for tomorrow is not going to be the most optimal. So really, the support that we have from our donors, from our supporters, from young people, from the voices of people who believe in children, uh, it's extremely important. So, you know, working with UNICEF means working with children for children. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, it was a really enlightening discussion, and I, as someone who's really passionate about child rights, got to learn a lot. Yeah, completely agreed. As promised, let's get started. As a peer educator, I indeed feel that children today will be leaders of tomorrow. So they must be educated about their rights. They must know about their rights so that they can know about their rights as well as they can help others to preserve their rights. So there must be counseling and educating students about their rights in schools. And it should start from today. So that today also if we know about, uh, about our rights, tomorrow also as a human, we can preserve our human rights. Not only for students, but also for parents and teachers that should happen so that there is overall happiness for everyone around us. So there is a very rushed condition in our government schools and students which are studying in uh, government schools because uh, there are a number of students in government school but a lesser number of teachers. Uh, so the condition of children in our school is not very good. The students of our school are struggling with so many problems like adolescent uh, changes and life skills. Mm -hmm. And there is no counselor which can deal with these problems. So. Uh, Dr. Nagpal sir and their team, Express India, are providing us so many, uh, so many things by their different programs. Or I will give my own words to this small pangti, which can be taken to every adolescent for every adolescent. That the seeds are the best for them. The seeds are the best for them, who have to go to the sky. The sky is my path, I have to make my own path. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. how great the peer education program is and how great the steps uh, are taken by UNICEF and Expressions India because uh, nowadays we must realize that uh, students like us really don't understand each other or uh, neither do our parents. So through this peer education program, we are actually spreading awareness about what we have to know to survive in this world. And uh, I would also like to say that uh, I feel, I personally feel that there should also be counseling sessions for parents as well so that they do not make uh, things they can only make things better they know how to say something and what to say exactly to make their child go in the right direction so that they are moreover aware of not only their rights but how to help out others and make India a developed country we note with deep concern that at present times it is necessary for us to address the problem of juvenile crimes exposure to violent games and movies can promote aggression which increases by many folds with age. So aggression management programs should be held in schools for children as far as their parents because the school is a me uh, major medium of interaction between children and, pa children and parents. Ma'am, it is seen in our society that uh, some of the groups are treated as inferior. Okay, Bullying has become a rampant scenario uh, in our society and also in the schools. Ma'am, we really need to eradicate these things. Teenage are, uh, ma'am, teenage suffer from peer pressure, also from bullying by seniors. So, ma'am, we need to eradicate this evil from the schools, and the school should develop science and 
the school should have counselors to help that about children and children can share their views with the, them how are they how they are suffering from bullying and all i feel that during adolescent year, years our body and mind is growing and so we need a balanced diet and we need our parents support and most of us lack this because there is a generation gap between our parents and us and the, there comes a communication gap and uh, you know sometimes it's that our parents are not able to understand what we are trying to say and sometimes it's that we are not able to understand what they are trying to do for us sometimes we feel that it's not good for us but sometimes it is not the case so i think that there should be programs held at intensive level to educate not only the students but the parents too because today in the developing society we also need our parents to know what a teenager needs what are their basic needs i mean there are many students there are many children who lack the support of their parent and there are many who are uh, malnourished they don't know their parents don't know that what should they eat what should they not so i think parents should be educated too i would like to thank unicef and doordarshan for giving me this opportunity to be here and attend this panel discussion and i completely agree that there are so many so many children in india who are facing various mental disabilities and many of them don't know that they are facing a learning disability and unicef has done so much to spread awareness about such cases and we are able to help these children and i'm completely grateful to all of you for spreading this awareness and helping so many children in our country as a peer educator i am worried about the physical safety of children all the children who are going uh, going to the school what are, what about their physical safety so i would like to suggest the honorable government of india and unicef to take some measures for the physical safety of millions for the millions of students going to the school actually as a counselor what i notice ki there are so many issues in teacher and with parent as well what are the issues when uh, as a counselor we suggest that there is a issue with the child uh, is there any disability with the child then parent suddenly got i don't know what they think but they check ki i'm we are stuck the child is now something ki we cannot treat them as a normal child so is it it is the responsibility responsibility of a school to take care of that child completely now i feel that as a counselor we should we should try and implement some plans how we can improve the teacher and parent relationship how we can empower the role of teacher and parent in school thank you so much to all our panelists unicef our wonderful audience all the teachers and schools who could take the time out to come here to participate to celebrate towards children's day with us thank you so much thank you thank for you having us thank you very much okay it's been wonderful I hope today children can inspire governments, businesses, organizations and other communities to incorporate our views and opinions in important decisions concerning us. With that being said, a, a very, very happy, happy World Children's, Children's Day. Day.